Assalamu alaikum, Brother Varka. It's very nice to meet you. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so today we are going to get to learn a little bit about you, and I'll start with my initial question, which is, we'd love to learn more about how you came to Islam. MashaAllah, every convert has many versions of this story, and um, the shortest version is I was spiritually seeking and I was investigating some of the Eastern traditions, Buddhism, and you know, engaging in mindfulness practice and yoga and searching, but I was also grew up and I was making music and reciting poetry, so I started reading a lot of the poetry and the music from around the world. And I came across some of the mystical poetry of Islam, particularly the Persian poets like Rumi and Hafez, which, as everybody knows, they have many popular translations in, in English, and so. I was really moved by the poetry, and not just the words, but the meanings and what they were getting at. And it seemed that there was an experience of the divine that was behind the words, and that's what really intrigued me. And so that had a huge impact on me, that kind of mystical poetry. And the more that I read about Islam and came across some of these great scholars and philosophers and mystics, I realized that, you know, this is what I already believe. I really was drawn to the fact that in Islam we affirm all of the prophets and all of the saints and sages of previous time, not only the ones mentioned in the Quran, but Allah says 144,000. Right? Every nation was sent a guide. And so I really loved that because I had re read in all these religions and I had seen that there was truth and beauty and goodness in all of them. And so I loved that there was this you know, Islam had this universal message. Um, so, you know, it's very interesting that my whole life is now like Islamic poetry and what drew me into Islam was Islamic poetry. So, Pamela, so tell us a little bit about your first Ramadan. My first Ramadan, actually, I think this is pretty rare for a convert, my first Ramadan was in a Muslim country. It was in Morocco. And I had only been Muslim three or four months, but I remember I was really like, I wanted to go study Islam, and I was right when I became Muslim. And one of my friends, I embraced Islam in Seattle where I grew up, and one of my friends in the masjid who was kind of like teaching me a little bit about Islam and was being a good friend to me, he was from Morocco, and he had come to the U.S. to study, and then he was living there. But he was like, you can go stay with my family in Morocco, and then you can, you know, break your fast there, and you can go to the mosque for Tarawiya. So I was with this Moroccan family and drinking Moroccan soup to break my fast. And I remember one funny thing is that I, would, I went with the, the father of the household who was, you know, in his 60s or something, and I was 20. Um, but I every night I went with him to the mosque. And he didn't speak any English and I didn't speak any Arabic. But... All I knew is they prayed for like two hours in the mosque, but I didn't know what Tarawiya was. So I just thought every night of the year, every single day, they just were that devoted praying two hours a night. And so I was like, wow, this is beautiful. And I prayed with them um, every night and, um, you know, not understanding a word of Arabic, not even understanding what Tarawiya was, um, but it was a beautiful memory that I have. That is beautiful, very special. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Do you prepare for Ramadan? I do try to prepare for Ramadan as much as I can, and uh, we know that the Prophet used to pray, "Barikna fi Rajab wa Shaaban wa Balikna Ramadan." Bless us in Rajab and Shaaban, and allow us to attain Ramadan. So it's like these two months to prepare. So I try to. Do it. One of the things that's very practical, tip for anyone who's like me and drinks a lot of coffee, you have to do some fasts in the lead, months leading up to it just so you don't get the headache. You get the headache withdrawals out of the way before Ramadan because you don't want that, that in Ramadan. So I try to cut down on my caffeine ta intake and pr do some fasts to prepare. I've always found that really helpful. Other than that, I, I try to... Um, make more time for the Quran because Ramadan is not just a time of fasting and celebration, but it's really the month of the Quran. And 
I really always strive to, you know, read a juz a day in the in, in Ramadan, to listen to the Quran, to go to Tarawih, to really just infuse myself, you know, because I'm someone who likes to read a lot and I listen to things, I listen to podcasts, whatever, outside of Ramadan. In Ramadan, I try to fast from reading anything with the Quran, fast from listening anything to the Quran as well. So I really just try to make it all about the Quran and just like, you know, Quran intensive. But so building up to Ramadan, I try to read the Quran more just to get myself in the habit of doing that. Yeah. SubhanAllah, that is wonderful. What do you cherish most about Ramadan? SubhanAllah. Yeah, that's a beautiful question. Ramadan is mysterious because, um, you know, I'm a convert, so I'm the only Muslim in my family. And it's funny, sometimes, you, you know, they will look at me like, oh, I'm sorry, Ramadan's coming up. <laughs> like, they feel sorry for me. And it's like, no, I'm sorry that you don't get to experience this because there's just the taste of, of, of Ramadan is, is miraculous in that sense. So, you know, alhamdulillah, um, you know, yeah, that's a blessing. Beautiful. Do you celebrate Eid? And if so, how? Yeah, um, I like to celebrate Eid and, um, you know, I enjoy the fact that Muslims get together in usually like open fields outside and pray and everybody's dressed up. And, um, you know, I don't do anything special. I drink coffee during the day and then I eat a little bit and feel like, oh, wow, I'm eating in the day. This feels wrong. But, um, no, I try to visit loved ones, friends and things like that, yeah. It truly is such a beautiful time of year. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Well, I thank you so much for taking time to answer questions and allow us to know a little more about you. Alhamdulillah. It's a blessing. And I would just say for those that are from Muslim families, to appreciate the great blessing of breaking fast together and experiencing Ramadan together, that's something that I would love to experience with my family and make dua that inshallah I can. Uh, one day with my parents and things like that. Um, but also to include converts, you know, especially new converts who may not have friends and family because the first Ramadans can be somewhat isolating, you know, because it is a very, um, it's a communal time. But, you know, if converts are don't have family and everybody goes with their family, they may be breaking fast alone and things of that nature. So, it's a great opportunity to reach out or, you know, some organizations do beautiful things where they have like people open up their house for converts in the community and have, a, you know, once, once during Ramadan, if a few families do that, you can have a gathering every week, you know, for the converts to come and experience, uh, you know, Ramadan in a Muslim household, which is really meaningful. Inshallah. Um, that's a wonderful idea, and I'm hopeful that we see more of that. Inshallah, Amen. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Walaikum salam.